Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a short walkthrough of a factorial ANOVA using SPSS version 28. Um, in previous versions of SPSS they did not incorporate a feature for performing simple effects tests and so if you had wanted to be able to do that following a significant interaction effect then you would have had to have gone into the syntax mode and made certain adjustments to the syntax in order to uh, perform those simple effects tests and as of SPSS version 28 it now incorporates the um, the option under EM means to be able to generate simple effects tests so uh, what I have on the screen right now are uh, three variables and what we're going to be doing is essentially testing a factorial model where we, we are going to be looking at the effects of instructional method on student achievement and determining whether that effect is moderated by student interest. So our two categorical variables are instructional method and student interest and our dependent variables is is this achieve variable right here. The achieve variable is interval scaled. Method is a nominally scaled variable where a value of 1 indicates students receiving instructional method A. A value of 2 indicates students receiving instructional method B. And then a value of 3 indicates a student receiving instructional method C. And then for the interest variable, um, basically we have a value of 1 indicating low interest and a value of 2 indicating high interest. So to carry out our analysis, we are going to go uh, under Analyze, go to General Linear Model, and then to Univariate. When we click on that, we're going to move Instructional Method over to the Fixed Factors box, as well as our Interest Variable right here. And we're going to move Achievement over to the Dependent Variable box. Under Options, I'll go ahead and select uh, some of the usual ones that I do, which will include Descriptive Statistics, Effect Size, uh, and power and then homogeneity test right here and uh, so we'll click on continue under plots I'll go ahead and request a profile plot uh, there are actually a couple of options that are available you have a line chart and a bar chart uh, for this one I'm just going to go with a bar chart although the line chart would suffice as well but I'm going to move instructional method over to the horizontal axis and then our moderating variable our proposed moderator interest over to the separate lines and click add and so this is going to get me then a plot with instructional method uh, represented along the x-axis and achievement along the y-axis and then interest is going to represent the moderating variable so we'll have separate lines for the interest variable under chart type as I said we have two options that are available I'm going to select bar chart for this and then if I want error bars I can certainly request that as well uh, you can see that I've gone ahead and just uh, requested error bars with a confidence interval at the 95 percent so we'll click on continue here if I wanted to generate post hoc tests like Tukey's uh, I could certainly do that uh, all I would need to do is to click under post hoc and then I could move instructional method over here and then click on Tukey. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm not really going to be interested in that, so I'm going to leave that alone. But that's just showing you that you can indeed uh, request post hoc tests. I am going to go under EM means or estimated marginal means right here. And under here, you'll see on the left side, we've got overall uh, method interest and then method by interest down here. So these are all the different uh, means that can be generated and these will be presented in the output following the test of between subjects effects. So I'm going to select all of these and move them over to the display means box. So when I click on that you'll see that I have a box that says compare main effects right here and then another box that says compare simple main effects. So in previous versions of SPSS this was not an option right here. You only had the compare main effect. So you could do essentially um, kind of a contrast uh, involving your, you know, one of your factor, one or both of your factor variables, but you couldn't do the simple effects analysis. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select compare simple main effects. And you've got under confidence interval adjustment, you've got uh, the uh, least significant difference option right there. Uh, then you've got Bonferroni and SIDAC procedure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select Bonferroni because there's going to be, uh, you know, a fair number of tests that will be carried out. And I want to control for type 1 error uh, across those. So I'm going to stick with Bonferroni right here. And then I'll click on continue. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. 
So in terms of the output, as we're looking at it, you'll see that we've got a table that contains descriptive statistics right here. We have the means and standard deviations for each cell. So keep in mind that we have uh, one independent variable with three levels. We have instructional method. There's A, B, and C right here. And then we have the second independent variable with two levels. We have interest with low and high. And you'll notice that both, you know, those two levels are found within, you know, kind of each level associated with method A, B, and C right there. So this ANOVA is basically a three by two factorial ANOVA, the three representing the number of levels for the method A variable and the two representing the number of levels for the interest variable. When you multiply those, you get six, uh, and those six, and the six actually is representing the number of cells in our analysis. So you'll see that uh, for each combination, you'll have a mean. So you can see method A, low interest, there's a mean right there, method A, high uh, interest, there's the mean right there, method B low, method B high, and so forth. And you'll see that each of those cells has a standard deviation and a sample size. So we'll scroll on down a little bit further, and you'll notice the next piece of our output, it's got Levine's test of equality of error variances. So one of the assumptions associated with the uh, factorial ANOVA, and really all um, of our uh, ANOVAs, if you will, uh, is equality of error variances. So in the context of a factorial ANOVA, we're talking about equality of error variances across cells. So you'll notice that there are basically uh, four uh, Levine's test options that are given. The first one is the one that historically has been associated with SPSS. This is the traditional version of Levine's test. The other three um, are basically adjustments that provide more robust tests uh, associated with um, error variances. And so just think about it this way, that basically these other tests are going to be less susceptible to the effects of non-normality and outliers than the, the traditional tests. So at any rate, when it comes to assessing um, or looking at Levine's test and interpreting it, what we're looking for is non-significant. So you can see that with the traditional test right here, we have a p-value that is uh, greater than 0 0.05, kind of the traditional uh, testing criteria. So that would be an indication, at least using that test, uh, that we have evidence um, that we have uh, uh, constant variances or essentially equality of error variances. Um, with respect to the other tests, you can also see that all of those uh, support that same conclusion. Now, when we scroll down a little bit further, we can look at our test of between subjects effects. So you'll notice as we're looking at this, we've got uh, our instructional method variable right here, interest right here, and then we have the interaction uh, that is formed between those two. So this is the interaction term. So as we're looking at this, we can evaluate each of these separate effects. But basically, um, if this interaction down here is statistically significant, then that's going to qualify any interpretation that we have for uh, the earlier effects that are given. So you'll notice that we have, uh, we'll start off with instructional method right here. And so uh, you can see that instructional method is uh, statistically significant. So we would say that the main effect of instructional method is statist statistically significant. So in other words, uh, the differences in means uh, across uh, instructional method um, are uh, significant. And you can also see there's our partial eta squared value, which is giving us uh, an indicator of effect size. And so we can use uh, Cohen's conventions of 0 0.01, 0 0.06, and 0 0.14 uh, as indicators of small, medium, and large effects. And you can see that uh, looking at the partial eta squared, that that would be an indicator of a large effect. When we look at the interest variable right here, you can see that the main effect of interest is not statistically significant. Let me clean this up just a bit. And you can see that there, here's our F value and the P value that's given. You can also see that we have a low effect size that's given right there. So we have a significant main effect for uh, instructional method not a significant main effect for uh, interest. Now when we look at the interaction between these two variables, you can see that uh, this interaction is statistically significant. So that's going to qualify our interpretations uh, of the effects for method and interest. So you can see right here that because we have 
uh, this significant interaction, we can we can interpret that as an indicator that the effect of instructional method on student achievement varies across levels of interest or student interest. And by the same token, we could um, uh, alternately uh, interpret uh, the uh, interaction as an indication that the effect of interest varies significantly across instructional method. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that the interaction qualifies the effects of the or qualifies our interpretations of the main effects. So now let's scroll down a little bit further and you can see that we have estimated marginal means. And so we have right here the grand mean uh, that's given uh, in this table right here and you know the grand mean that's shown right here the 5.614 uh, that's not necessarily going to be equal to the grand mean that you might see kind of up here in this table uh, right here kind of in this total um, column right here and the reason why uh, basically is because in this case our cell sizes are un unequal so you can see that we do have equal cell sizes right here uh, and uh, but you know as you see right here within method B we have unequal cell sizes uh, that are given uh, and we have equal cell sizes right here but overall we do not have equal cell sizes so the grand mean uh, that we would see within the uh, this table right here and also the means that we're going to be referring to shortly um, are not necessarily going to be the same as those that are given down here and when it comes to our actual tests of you know concerning main effects and interactions uh, what we're using are these means uh, in this table down here or in these tables down here so you can see again we have a, the grand mean uh, that's given right here we have the means uh, are the marginal means for instructional methods so you can see there's method a method B uh, and method C right there and so with this you can see that we have some differences uh, in the means that are evident and uh, so you can see that students in method A had the lowest achievement followed by those in method C followed by those in method B and then we have the marginal means for student interest right here and so those in the low interest um, group um, had um, essentially a higher mean than those in the high interest group uh, but nevertheless you know as we saw before in our test of main effects it was no difference but then again when it came to testing that interaction we we do have evidence of moderation going on so when we scroll down the next table contains the cell means and so you can see right here that um, that for students um, who are receiving method A who are low in interest the mean is 2.6 for those high in interest it's 5 for students uh, in method B who are low in interest the mean is 7.33 for those who are high it's 6.7 right there so you can see uh, as you're looking at this that there's a bigger difference in the means between the low and high interest students between these two within A uh, than you see right here between uh, the low and high uh, groups among those receiving method B uh, you can also see with method C uh, the low group uh, the mean is 7.6 and the high group uh, the mean is 4.4 so now when you're looking at the output you can see that we have uh, some additional tables uh, which again we were not able to generate previously uh, using earlier versions of SPSS at least not using uh, anything anything other than uh, kind of uh, the pace function and uh, modifying some syntax uh, so in this case right here you can see that we have a table of pairwise comparisons. so this table right here is allowing us to kind of look at differences in um, in means uh, for the students receiving uh, the in different instructional methods for those students who are low and high in interest so the moderator uh, in this case is being treated as low uh, the interest variable right here so we have low and high interest so you can see that uh, method A and method B this first comparison right here you can see the difference um, in terms of method A and method B for the low students is negative 4.733 and you can see that that difference is statistically significant if we go back up to this other table uh, you can see right here there's method A there's the low group uh, right there and then method B the low group right here so if I take the 2.6 and subtract the 7.333 that's what gets me the mean difference and again you can see that the difference is statistically significant 
So next you can see that we have a comparison uh, among the low interest students between method A and method C. So you can see here that we have a difference of five and you can see that difference is statistically significant. Again if we go back up to the previous table we can see a comparison between these students uh, receiving method A and these students right here receiving method C. So if I just take uh, right here, if I take the 2.6 and subtract the 7.6, that's what gets me the negative 5 that's given right here. Then when we compare method B versus method C, that last comparison, you can see that there's no significant difference between um, uh, those students receiving those two methods, um, at least for those students who are low in interest. When we look at the high interest students, the differences between the difference between method A and B is not significant. Between method A and C right here is not significant. And the difference between method B and method C, there's no difference right there. So you can see kind of generally that the differences that we're observing in instructional method do appear to vary uh, depending on whether the student is low versus high in interest. And you can see more significance kind of occurring for those student for those comparisons involving the low interest students uh, as, com as opposed to those who are high in interest. The univariate test that's given down here is kind of an omnibus test, if you will, of all of the differences. And so you can see that we have a test uh, for students who are low in the interest. This right here would be a test of differences among the instructional methods for those students who are low in interest. And you can see we have statistically significant differences overall. And then for those students who are high in interest right here, uh, we see no differences emerging. Um, by instructional method. When we scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have basically our same estimates uh, that are given and we also have more pairwise comparisons in those univariate tests right here. This might be useful if your focus was not so much on instructional method as the focal independent variable and in interest as the uh, moderator. In this case maybe you know we might be interested in uh, focusing in on uh, the effect of interest at different levels of uh, instructional method. So if that was our focus we might uh, want to have that information. So I'll just kind of briefly go through this. You can see that we have our estimates that are given uh, as we had had basically, you know, kind of before only kind of reversed here with, uh, you know, interest over here and method over here. But basically, as you're looking at this, you can see with the pairwise comparisons, uh, there's uh, by instructional method. Now we have method A, method B, and method C and comparisons involving low versus high interest students. So you can see, uh, first off, we have for method A, the, com the uh, low uh, interest mean minus the high interest mean, that difference is negative 2.4. So, you know, basically what we have right here is this 2.6 uh, minus this 5 right here, and that's what got, got us our negative 2.4. You can see that there's a significant difference right here between um, the low and high uh, students in uh, method B, you can see there's no difference, but we do see a difference in method C between the low and high uh, students right here. There's the mean difference and significance level. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, you can see our univariate tests. And uh, so again, you could look at these as kind of omnibus tests of differences uh, uh, involving, in this case, the interest variable at different levels of instructional methods. So students receiving instructional method one, you can see that there's overall difference um, in means between the low and uh, high interest students. Uh, for instructional method B, no difference. And then with instructional uh, method C, uh, that there being a difference in between the students who are high versus low in interest. Then finally you can see that we have our uh, profile plot of, of our marginal means and we also have our confidence intervals that were generated as well. And so as you're looking at this right here you can see that uh, really between you can see over here we've got the color coded uh, the lows are light blue and the highs in terms of interest are greens. And so you can see you know, bigger differences uh, between uh, students who are low versus high in interest uh, among those who are in method A and method C and less difference for those who are in method B right there. And just to show you what it would look like if we were to generate the same results using the uh, 
the uh, profile plot uh, basically where we have um, a line chart I'll go back here to line chart right here and click on continue and then on OK and scroll down and this is what it looks like right here so uh, basically it's the same information just repackaged a bit uh, obviously this is a little bit more colorful and looks nicer but um, if you want a line chart you can certainly uh, generate that as you uh, run your analysis. Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this video demonstration and I appreciate you watching.